Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Seeker Plus again this week. My name is Trace. This is episode two of three in our series on vitamins. If you haven't listened to the first episode that explains all about vitamins, and where they came from, you should probably go back and do that. Make sure you subscribe for all the episodes in this series, and you can come find an audio podcast of this over on SoundCloud, iTunes, or wherever you get your podcasts. So make sure you check that out. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the difference between fat-soluble and water-soluble vitamins, which vitamins do what, because there are a lot of them and they all do different things, and whether there can be too much of a good thing. Hint, yeah, there can be. There can be. <laughs> it's really bad. Okay, so let's kick into it. We left off last time thinking about vitamins and exploring the different types of vitamins, right? We had fat-soluble vitamins, water-soluble vitamins. We explained where vitamin A came from. Vitamins are everywhere. And yet, we have to eat specific things to check all of the different boxes and get all of the different vitamins to make ourselves healthy. And it seems like there are so many different vitamins, right? A, B, C, D, E, K, B1, B2, B3. There are so many B vitamins, actually. But which of these are needed and which can we kind of skimp on? That's what I want to know, right? What's the reality behind vitamins? Which vitamins are the most important? So let's start with the fat-soluble vitamins. A fat-soluble vitamin is something that we consume and then it is processed by our fat, which means it goes into the fat and it's stored there. It stays in our body. It's easier to overdose on that would mean because it just builds up inside. That's vitamin A, D, E, and K. And they each do very specific things. A helps with red blood cell formation, skin formation, vision, growth, and development. D helps with blood pressure, bone growth and calcium balance, hormone production and nervous system function. E helps with blood vessel growth and antioxidants. K helps with blood clotting and bone strength. And remember, these are very important things, and that's good that they can be stored because we don't necessarily eat them every day. So when we need them, they're there. Then there's water-soluble vitamins. These are more temporary. We eat them and they're processed through the water of our body, which means they get excreted. If you have a lot of this, then you're basically gonna have really expensive urine, which I'm probably gonna say more than once, just so you know. So all the B vitamins under the B umbrella, one, two, three, five, seven, nine, you know, there's so many different ones, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, all have the same name because of loose similarities in their properties and their distribution in natural sources. Together, I'm just gonna take all the B vitamins. They can help with energy, protein, carbs, fat metabolism. They can help stop birth defects, help with red blood cell formation, cholesterol production, nervous system functions. They can help the food to energy conversion, hormone production, growth and development. Very important stuff, right? Which means you have to consume these vitamins constantly because again, you're excreting them. Vitamin C is the same. You have to eat it constantly and it can help with connective tissue formation, wound healing and antioxidants. And again, cannot be stored. So you have to continually consume it. Extra though, doesn't always help. And we'll come back to why in a minute. Nutritionists and scientists are pretty clear on this. The best way to get vitamins is through a healthy diet, not necessarily through chewy, tasty, gummy candies. It's obviously different for everyone, but it is possible to eat all of these things in just a normal diet because they exist in so many different foods. I'm not gonna list all the different foods that all the different vitamins could come in because I'd basically be reading you a spreadsheet, but you can find it out there. It's so easy to find. And they exist in a bunch of different things. So let me give you some brief examples. A vitamins come from orange foods. Yeah, things like eggs and milk as well, obviously. B vitamins, uh, come in so many things, I'm not even going to list any of them. There's just so many that have B vitamins in them. E vitamins come in green vegetables, nuts, peanuts, and vegetable oils. K vitamins also are found in green vegetables. None of the vitamins are exclusive to any one type of diet, although B12 is something that we get from meat because we will eat a animal that has consumed B12 in its environment. It's found via soil bacteria, so vegetarians can't actually get supplements that will get them B12. But for the most part, people can just eat a normal diet and get all of these different vitamins. Also, FYI, vegans can eat B12 because it comes from bacteria and bacteria is vegan. Fun, fun fact. But let's say that you don't want to or you can't, maybe an allergy, eat all of these different things or that you want it to be simple, right? You just want a pill, take care of it, have a supplement, you no problem. Vitamin supplements are widely available and they have been for a long time. A 2012 Harvard Medical School study says 
Quote, 114 million Americans, roughly half of the adult population, take at least one supplement. And in 2015, the Council for Responsible Nutrition, which, by the way, is a lobbying front for the supplement industry, says that 68% of Americans take a supplement. Globally, the supplement industry is $133 billion. But again, you don't always need vitamins. It's a supplement. Carol Hagens, a dietitian and consultant to the National Institutes of Health, quote, says, supplements can be useful for filling gaps in your diet, end quote. The thing is, supplements are not drugs, so they're not regulated by the FDA in the same way. If a supplement claims to cure something, like a drug would, that's a red flag. So when you do go to look for supplements, make sure that you're keeping that in mind. Another quick sidebar, if you see the word fortified on something, do you know what that means? Because I didn't. Basically, it means that they've added a vitamin to it. So fortified milk or fortified cereal is something that they added vitamins to to make it, quote unquote, in the air healthier, right? 2% milk has 36% less vitamin A because they stripped out some of the milk fat from the whole milk. So they put it back in and they fortify the milk. That means vitamins, again, have been added. For simplicity, just assume that you can get vitamins just as easily from fortified products. They've been around for almost 100 years, so they're pretty safe. And sidebar. Before I explain anything else, though, you may have noticed it's that time of year again, the time when you need thoughtful gifts for loved ones in your life, or hey, yourself, self-care, very important, treat yourself. So think about the gift of an Audible membership. Now is the best time to do it because they are running a special offer. Audible has access to an unbeatable selection of audiobooks, including bestsellers, mysteries, science fiction novels, and more. I have been listening to Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. It is so good. I really like it, and I get to learn while I ride the bus or do a road trip. And with an Audible membership, you get to choose three titles every single month, and you can listen on any device at any time, at the gym, on your commute, on the go, you name it. Right now, for a limited time, you can get three months of Audible for only $6.95 a month. That is more than half off their regular price. Give yourself the gift of listening. And while you're at it, think about giving the gift of Audible to someone else on your list as well. So for more, go to audible.com slash seeker or text seeker to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash seeker or text seeker to 500-500. Okay, so vitamins. As you know, they are needed. You have to get them from the environment. You have to eat them and consume them in order to do all sorts of amazing things within your body. But every vitamin works differently. So let's trace vitamin D through the whole process. Vitamin D is found in fatty or oily fish. It's also created, fun fact, inside of your skin. Let's take that route. Deep in the skin is a steroid called 7-dehydrocholesterol. It's a cholesterol. And when it's hit by UVB from the sun, just being outside, it breaks one of its chemical bonds and it converts to cholecalciferol or vitamin D. Then a protein called vitamin D binding protein or DBP grabs it and transports it into the bloodstream to where it's needed. It helps us express our genes. Up to 1,250 different genes can be expressed and help by vitamin D. And it's used to build bones because vitamin D helps us absorb calcium out of our diet. The thing is, only five to 30 minutes in the sun will do it two to three times a week. So if you're outside, just Make sure you've got some skin exposed to the sun. That's really it. If you don't consume enough of the vitamin, you can have a deficiency. And vitamin D is one of those. It's actually fairly common. One billion people worldwide could have low vitamin D. Uh, senior citizens commonly have low vitamin D. People in northern countries often don't see as much of the sun, especially in the winter months, so they might have low vitamin D. Sun exposure can be tough to come by in a lot of different places, right? And it can contribute to bone loss. It can often cause people to get sick more often, can cause fatigue. Uh, over time, and it can even make people have a little trouble healing. But of course, you can take a vitamin supplement for something like that, right? If that is the situation that you're living in, don't just live without vitamin D, take a small supplement and you should be okay. But if you overdose on vitamin D, that can be bad. So this is what I mentioned earlier, too much of a good thing. If you overdose on vitamin D, it can cause a buildup of calcium in your blood. 
basically, the vitamin D doesn't know when to stop binding and bringing calcium out, right? It just does it. That's its job. So if you have a lot of vitamin D, you're going to get a lot of calcium, and that can cause a problem in your body. It can also cause nausea and vomiting, weakness and frequent urination. It can cause bone pain. It can cause kidney problems. Of course, this isn't like I took one vitamin D supplement and suddenly all of this happened. You'd have to take handfuls of vitamin D pills every day for months. But that's not always the case. Some vitamins are a little more prone to being overdosed. Let's go back to vitamin A. Vitamin A, eventually, once we figured out exactly what it was and where it was coming from, we learned to synthesize it. It was first synthesized in 1947 and put into tablets or pills to supplement people's diets to make sure that they could still grow even if they didn't have vitamin A in their diet. The thing is, you only need three milligrams per day of vitamin A. That's not very much. And according to Harvard, quote, large amounts of supplemental vitamin A can be harmful to your bones and it doesn't get excreted. Remember, this is fat-soluble, vitamin A. Water-soluble, things like vitamin C and B12, again, very expensive urine. Fat-soluble vitamins, if you eat too many of them, can build up and cause all sorts of problems. So there are times when vitamins can be helpful, like fortification, or if, say, you do have a deficiency in your diet or in your environment, or if you're at risk for a deficiency. What about like multivitamins, right? Something that's, it's just a broad spectrum vitamin that you can take every day, cover all your bases. That's a good thing, right? People take them all the time, but should they? I mean, we sort of touched on what happens if you overdose with vitamins, but there is an industry that's there to try and sell you on the idea that you're missing something. How does this affect your body? We'll find out more about that next week. Thanks for watching Seeker Plus, everyone. I am Trace. For more episodes, come find us wherever you get your audio podcasts. There are also new full stories on the audio podcast feed every single week. In the meantime, you can watch more Seeker videos. Just come find us. All you got to do is look for Seeker. You can also find me out there. I'm at Trace Dominguez.